If you have more than one salesperson or staff members that would be taking scheduled calls or appointments, you are likely wondering how to round robin inside of Go High Level. High Level has a great option for teams being on the exact same calendar, and I'm going to walk you through that in the tutorial today. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel to make sure you never miss a tutorial on Go High Level, Facebook ads, or anything small business marketing and sales. Let's dive in. The first thing you'll need to do is navigate to your sub account and click on the settings tab to complete this entire team calendar setup. Well, team calendars are great for, you guessed it, teams. If you have multiple employees or staff members that would want appointments scheduled through the system, a team calendar is a great option for that. The very first thing that needs to take place is you need to add them in the team management settings. So I'm going to go ahead and do a default or a, a dummy person. So we'll just call this test, test, test at, and then phone number. I would likely put the team member's phone number in here if you're using a team calendar. The reason for that is if that person has been assigned to the booking and that person that booked might need to call in for any reason, I think it's best if the person who they have the appointment scheduled with is the one who will get that phone call. If you do not put a phone number in there, if they call in, it's simply going to go to your default Twilio number, whatever that forwarding number is that you have inside of that. So again, this would be if you want those phone calls to get redirected to the individual who is on that calendar booking if that person who booked needs to call in. So I'm going to leave it blank for now, but you would want to do that in that circumstance. We'll give them a password. And if we would like a signature on their emails, then we can plug that in here. These two checkboxes are optional. Enable signature on all outgoing messages or include the signature before quoted text and replies. So this will be replies and brand new emails. This would be just on that first message in those replies. And then we would also be able to select an individual calendar. What I suggest if you were going to be using team calendars is that for every team member, you have an individual calendar similar to that booking request calendar we looked at, and then you'll also have them on the team calendar. The reason for that is that likely your initial appointments will be booked on the team calendar, self-scheduled by that new client or lead. But after someone has a working relationship with that person, if they need to schedule a follow-up appointment or that next appointment, they might just want to do that on that individual person's calendar without worrying about scheduling on the team calendar where it may be rotating who gets those appointments. So again, in order to do this, we would need to create that calendar first. This is optional, but it is recommended. So I'm just going to use our booking request calendar as my example here. And then our user permissions, we can set those as we want. Only assigned data, that would be only assigned data. If something is not assigned to this specific user, they're not going to be able to see it. So these are really just the same settings that we would go through when we add people on that team management. And then for user calendar configuration. So what has to happen in order for this person to have their Google or Outlook calendar connected in the team calendar is once we've set up this user, they're actually going to need to log in with their own login credentials that we just set up and go to that integrations tab and integrate their own calendar. And then they will be able to select it here. So for those team calendars to have different users with different Gmail or Outlook integrations, they do need to log in through their own account and then do that integration. So we're just going to hit save here. Now I've got my test team member. Now I'm going to go to teams. 
I'm going to click on add team and we'll just say classic cuts Louisville location. So add or remove team members. Let's say both of these employees will be taking appointments from new leads. I'm going to give it a name. This will be classic cuts booking. Give that a description and then enter a unique slug. So we're just going to call this Louisville for that Louisville location. Then we have this checkbox down here, assign contacts to their respective calendar team members each time an appointment is booked. So if you are using only assigned data in those user settings, you definitely want to do this. You also have the option for skip assigning the contact if the contact already has an assigned user. This is up to you, but I do like for that person to be assigned to whomever they have the appointment with, and we're just going to hit save. So those are all the team settings. We're just kind of setting up these general teams. I can see the initials of the two people on this team. Then I'm going to go over to calendars. So if I have a team set up, you now see this separate tab. Initially, we only saw the one on the left but that's not the calendar being set up. It's the team being set up for me to add that new calendar. So I don't need to give this a name because we already have a name for that team, but we have two different options for appointment distribution. The first one is optimize for availability. And what that means is that if someone tries to schedule for let's call it three o'clock PM, well, maybe, both people have 3 o'clock p.m. available. The question is, who gets that appointment? So if I want to set this person as a high priority, it would give this person that appointment first. Once that 3 p.m. slot has been booked for this team member, this would be the next person to get a 3 o'clock booking. You can do customized meeting locations per user. If you want to optimize for equal distribution, then it is going to be more of a classic round robin. So it will just allow one person to book only on this first team member's available slots. Once that person gets a slot filled, it will then revert to the availability for this next team member. So that's if you want to keep things even. Everyone gets the same number of appointments. Optimize for availability can work better in my opinion because some people may need certain times and you don't want that to prevent them from being able to schedule. And I do like to have high priority or low priority. However, if everyone is, is even in terms of that priority, you could mark them both as high priority, but it would be a little bit confusing for the system. So I think it's best to ju just go ahead and prioritize. Let's say your calendar is filled up and you want to add another person to get more availability. That's fine. Add another team member to your team. They'll show up here and you can click on that checkbox. Or let's say that maybe this new team member isn't doing very well and I kind of need to take a pause and do some training, figure out what's going on. I can just uncheck them. So then there would just be one person in that team calendar, but that's fine. It's very easy to turn on the other people when I'm ready. So if you do already have several employees, even if you're only going to start getting bookings on one person specifically on their calendar, still might be a better idea to set up this team calendar and just have one user selected. But when you're ready to add the rest, you won't have to switch to a team calendar and update the calendars in your pages. You'll just be able to click on these little check boxes and you'll be good to go. Calendar name, we are going to say Classic Cuts Louisville. Description, same type of thing as in that original calendar. Calendar slug, we're just going to say booking. Appointment title, again, we see that contact name. That's just the lead's name, but I'm going to do plus or at Classic Cuts Barbershop or Appointment. And then this is going to be the event color, the way that it shows up inside of the calendar. Then I'm going to go to save and continue. The availability, you'll have some of those same options here. This is going to be that general availability. Again, the individual's availability will be pulled from their Google or Outlook calendar integration 
in order to get that for the team calendar, they've got to log in as themselves, as that user. The admin cannot do it just on their admin account. And then they need to integrate from their account and their user profile. Then we've got confirmation. Again, we can select that calendar booking form. That sticky contact option, that's actually being pulled from the custom form. So if you still want to use sticky contact with a form, you just make sure that in the form settings that's turned on, you'll be able to see that in the form video. And again, same options here that I would use in my initial calendar setup. Same thing with that form submit redirect URL. I'm going to click complete. And now I have this calendar set up. You can see that this is my high level URL for this calendar. I typically would not have this link as the link I'm sending people. We are going to embed this on a page, but this is what the team calendar looks like. It's a different visual format than our regular booking calendar. This is what the regular booking calendar looks like. This is what the team calendar looks like. It's a wider format. So again, if you plan on using the team calendar, it's best to set that up initially and just add people on as needed because you may need to reformat some of your pages whenever you switch over. So that is something that you're going to want to consider. That is it with team calendars. You start by adding team members, then adding a team, then adding the specific calendar, making sure that each individual user has logged into their profile, integrated through integrations tab, and then selected that calendar for themselves on their own profile under team management. That's it. You are ready to start using team calendars, and I will see you on the next video.